Back to the gang in a sec, but right now, Nigel Farage joins us from London. So, I don't know whether it's going to be GB News, I don't know whether it's going to be Talk TV, I don't know if it's going to be Channel 4, ITV, the BBC, Sky News, or Channel Dave. I think that's a channel in the UK. But is this serious, that uh, there is an idea being floated that TV networks would be willing to pay Harry to be part of their coronation coverage? <laughs> well, I have to say, the story that's been put out there is by a very senior royal correspondent. I don't doubt the truth of it. So for Harry, what a wonderful situation. By getting that story in the press now guarantees him an invitation to the coronation. <laughs> I think this is quite a clever uh, PR spin that's been put behind this. I mean, the idea of Harry commentating. I mean, the poor chap can barely string a sentence together without contradicting himself. <laughs> um, but having, having put that out there, he's guaranteed an invitation. And then, you see, he can write in a book a whole chapter about how his brother didn't look at him in the most respectful way, how the seating plan was wrong for Meghan and how racists in the crowd booed them. Oh, he wins both ways on this. The King's got no choice. I'm sorry to say the King's got no choice. He will have to invite Harry and Meghan to the coronation. Just make sure there's no dog bowls around because apparently uh, while the Taliban couldn't lay a glove on him, apparently a broken dog bowl, that can get a big cut up your back and then 14 <laughs> chapters and six parts in the documentary. Um, how do you feel about uh, the potential of King Charles giving an interview between now and the coronation? Oh, please don't. Please, please, please don't do it. Look, Charles is a very passionate man. There are issues that he cares hugely about. And if he gets dragged in, if he gets dragged into a big sit-down interview, he will opine on all the things that he cares about. Architecture, climate change, etc. He won't be able to help himself. And then the critics will say, well, hang on a second, he's still behaving as he did as the Prince of Wales, being a campaigner, not behaving like a head of state. Huge mistake. There are times when the head of state should speak. I thought the Queen, at the time of the first lockdown with the pandemic, the Queen going on, you know, and talking to the nation, to the Commonwealth, um, about, about the fact, you know, she'd seen tough times before and we come through it. That's appropriate. That is right. I think Christmas messages are appropriate and right. But to sit down and be asked a whole series of questions, and no doubt, you know, he'll be overly frank in his response. Please, please, Your Majesty, I beseech you, don't do it. I'll throw a random one at you, though. What about Prince William? I mean, all of, my, all of the bad stuff in the book was basically about him. Uh, he is free to speak and respond. Do you think that, I mean, at some point he's going to sit down at some point in his life, and if it's next month, next year or next decade, you know exactly the first question he's going to be asked. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. And I, and I think for any family, let alone the royal family, to air their dirty linen in public, no good ever comes of it. Two wrongs don't make a right. The best thing to do with Harry and Meghan is to ignore them. And in the end, they will go away because people will get very bored with them. And interestingly, looking at the Netflix ratings in America, um, that six-part series is now ranking 95th on the Netflix list. So the indications are people are beginning to get bored already. They will go away at some point. Well, speaking of the Netflix list, how many times have you seen Wednesday? Sorry, Paul, say that again. <laughs> exactly. The, you know, Wednesday, the spin-off of The Addams Family, which was the big Netflix hit last year. Is uh, Nigel Farage a secret Wednesday Addams fan? Can you do the dance? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I have to confess I'm not. Um, the, uh, the only Netflix film I've watched in the last few weeks, I recommend it to all of you, is the remake of the 1929 book and 1930 film All Quiet on the Western Front. And uh, have a look at that. Mm. Um, and, 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 and it's grim, it's brutal, but remind yourself why Western countries like ours need to have strong defences, nuclear deterrence, because we never, ever want to get caught up in that sort of thing again. Bloody oath. Either way, I knew I'd get a good answer out of it. It's nominated for Best Picture as well, that film. Finally, Novak Djokovic, 12 months ago, booted out of Australia um, because of not having the vaccine. 12 months later, applauded by Australia and wins his 10th Australian Open and he's now on track for the most majors ever. 
Yeah, well, I was there last year in Belgrade. I was in the trophy room, in, in Novak's trophy room, with the nine replicas of the Australian uh, title. And I'm pleased to say that a tenth will be going in that cabinet. And this is one in the eye, isn't it, for all the lockdown fanatics, for those who try to take away our liberties and our freedoms. They put the man under house arrest uh, and he's come back. He's one in style. And I'll back him now to win an 11th Australian title next year. Well done, Novak. Fantastic. Good man. Thank you, Nigel. Always lovely to talk to you. You can see all of his stuff on Flash here in Australia. You can get all the uh, YouTube content and all the rest of it with Nigel Farage. But the only time to see him being spoken to by an Australian is right on this program each and every week. Quick break. Back with more here on Paul Murray Live.